your sons and daughters are seated with their hearts open, ready to hear from you. Father, we invite you in a special way to please, Lord, come and take your place. Give us a message of hope and encouragement. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Faithfulness in the line of duty. Our psalm today will be based on Genesis chapter 39. Based on Genesis chapter 39. We are going to look at the story of a young man in the Bible by the name of Joseph. And the story of Joseph in the Bible is one of such stories that challenges the essence of our faith. It is one of those stories that challenges the essence of our Christianity. And I want us to examine that story today. You know, friends, Joseph in the Bible, I see him as a young man of principle. A young man that was so consistent in his work with the Lord. If you read from the Bible book of Genesis chapter 39, verse 1 to number 4, I want us to read those few verses. Genesis chapter 39, verse number 1 to 4, the Bible says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down to Peter. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian. Verse number three. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put in the hands of Joseph. You know, the story of Joseph in the Bible, we are very much aware of everything that transpired between Joseph and his brothers in his father's house. How they hated this young man. And that hatred eventually led them to sell their brother to the hands of the Ishmaelites. These Ishmaelites took Joseph to the land of Egypt. And in the land of Egypt, they sold Joseph out to an officer of Pharaoh by the name of Potiphar. So Joseph stayed in the house of Potiphar. As a slave boy in the house of Potiphar, he served in the house of Potiphar for many, many years. But there is one thing that actually stood out about Joseph. Despite all that Joseph went through, his relationship with the Lord remained unshaken. His relationship with the Lord remained intact. That is one thing that stood out in the life of Joseph. Now when you read Genesis 39 verse number 2, the Bible tells us something very remarkable that happened in the life of Joseph. In Genesis 39 verse number 2, the Bible says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man in the house of Potiphar. Now, my dear friends, I think the first lesson that we need to take from the story is wherever you are, 
If you maintain a consistent walk with the Lord, God can bless you wherever you are. Here is Joseph in the house of Potiphar. You know, we live in a society today that people believe you cannot get to the top until you are connected. Until you know someone. We live in a generation of God facts. But here is Joseph in the land of Egypt. In the land of Egypt, Joseph had no man. He had no father. He had no relative. In fact, Joseph was not connected in any way. But still, the Lord prospered him. So, my dear friends, what are the excuses that we give sometimes for not making it in life? Sometimes you say it's because you are the only activities in that school. No, you are the only pastor in that community. We give a lot of excuses. But what I'm telling you today, dear friends, is wherever we are, as long as we maintain a consistent work with the Lord, you don't need to know anybody. Just work with the Lord. Just that was only alone in the land of Egypt. But the Lord prospered him. Verse number 3 of Genesis 39. Verse number 3. Another interesting thing that happened in the life of Joseph. The Bible records there, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. I so much love the first phrase of that text. The Bible says his master saw that. Now his master in this sense, we are talking about Potiphar. Because Potiphar was his master. And who was Potiphar? Potiphar was an Egyptian. And what was the custom of the Egyptians? Their custom was idol worship. But because of the way Joseph lived his life, because of the way Joseph behaved himself, this idol worshiper, this hidden man, was compelled to acknowledge that the Lord was with Joseph. My dear friends, let me tell us. The only thing that validates your faith as a child of God, the only thing that validates my faith as a Christian, is when outsiders, unbelievers, people who don't know God, are compelled to acknowledge that the Lord is with me. You see, when fellow believers like you commend your faith or begin to say some nice things about you, it matters less to God. In fact, it doesn't carry weight. Because in the church, we pretend a lot. We even pretend to be what we are not. A lot of people praise in the church. But are we tend to be more real when we are out there. So here is Joseph in the land of Egypt. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I can tell you that Joseph was the only Christian in Egypt. Because in Egypt there was no church. In Egypt there was no pastor. Even his parents were not there. But Joseph lived out his faith to the extent that this hidden man, his master, was compelled to acknowledge that the Lord was with Joseph. So, dear friends, the only thing that validates our Christianity, the only thing that validates our faith, is when outsiders, people who don't know God, are compelled to acknowledge that the Lord is with us. But the biggest question is, what are people out there saying about us? You know your colleagues in the office, your neighbors at home, in your business, in your arena, what are people saying about you? Because we tend to be Christians only on the Sabbath. In other days, we are something else. And let me also say this, dear friends. When you read Matthew chapter 5, verse number 16, the Bible says, Let your light so shine before men. Not in the church. 
You see, your life as a Christian is not even needed in the church. Nobody needs your life here. In fact, we only come here to recharge our spiritual batteries. We only come here to sharpen our tools as Christians so that we can go out and give the light. Because the light is not needed here. So we are only here to sharpen ourselves. We are only here to recharge our spiritual batteries. We are only here to encourage one another so that we can go out and live out our Christianity. That is what the Bible says. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So here we see Joseph in the land of Egypt. Joseph was only not there, but uh, Joseph laid out his faith that his master was compelled to acknowledge that the Lord was with Joseph. And that is the only thing that validates your Christianity as a child of God. And therefore, we need to ask ourselves you know, some serious questions about the way we dress, our eating habits, even our conversations. Now sometimes we tend to dress decently and nicely only on the Sabbath. You know the same sister you see in the church on Saturday smartly dressed. By the time you see the same sister on the street on Tuesday, you can't believe your eyes. Now we come to church, we dress decently. Verse number four of Genesis 39. Verse number four. The Bible says, And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made overseer over his house, and all that he had he put in the hands of Joseph. And so much interested in the first phrase of that text. And Joseph found grace in his sight. Friends, let me tell you, you see, wickedness. Does not all righteousness any fail? You know, Cain killed Abel because Abel was righteous and he was wicked. But here we find Joseph in the house of Potiphar, a hidden man, somebody who does not even believe in God, and yet Joseph found grace in his sight. You know, it is always nice to walk with the Lord. Because when you walk with the Lord, even circumstances can be changed for your fear. Circumstances can be changed for your good. That is why the Bible says Joseph found grace in his sight. He showed him fear. That is why it is beautiful to walk with the Lord. Verse number 5 and 6 of Genesis 39. Verse 5 and 6. Then the Bible says, and it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. That is verse number five. And verse number six says, and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not what he had, and well felt. You see, verse number five seems to be, you know, telling us something that I think we can also take, you know, a lesson there and that challenge ourselves as Christians because the Bible is saying from the moment that he made Joseph overseer over his house and all that he had. The Bible says, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Are we together? For the first house was blessed for the sake of Joseph. You know, as Christians, when you are made a director in that office, you bring blessings of corruption. 
as a child as well? In that setting where you live, in that community, are you a blessing to that community or a problem? Because Christians, we are meant to be blessings. Our presence everywhere, wherever a Christian is, his presence should attract you know, blessings to that community. So you ask yourself as a Christian, your presence in that community, your presence in that office, your presence in that workplace, is it a blessing or a problem? The house of Potiphar was blessed, not for his sake, but the Bible says for the sake of Joseph. From the so much interested in verse number six. And verse number six tells you how much Potiphar trusted Joseph. Because in verse number six, the Bible says, and he left all that he had in the hands of Joseph. And he knew not what that he had, save the bread which he did eat. I don't know whether we understand what this particular verse is saying. He left all that he had in the hands of Joseph. He takes no account. He knew not what he had except the bread which he did eat. Now, if I may put those verses in my own words, this is how we put them. If you ask Potiphar, how much do you have in your bank account? Potiphar will tell you, I have no idea, go and see Joseph. You say, Potiphar, what and what do you have in your store? Say, I have no idea. Kindly see Joseph. You even say, Potiphar, how is your wife and the kids? Potiphar will tell you, I don't even know how they are doing, go and see Joseph. That was how much Potiphar trusted Joseph. Because he left all that he had in the hands of Joseph and he cared about nothing. His only concern was the food that he ate. With Joseph in charge, he had nothing to worry. With Joseph in charge, he had nothing to worry. Children of God, did somebody trust you that much? Did someone trust you that much as a Christian? You know, today we hear a lot of scandals, you know, stories, even elders misusing church money, church pastors misappropriating church funds. So many stories. But here is a young man in the land of Egypt. Joseph was only a man there, and he lived out his faith to this extent that what if I fact, probably we may not even understand. I don't actually know how he felt. Somebody said the position of Potiphar then can be equated to the position of a present day governor. First of all, I don't know whether what we call governor in Nigeria is also how they actually regard it here in Kenya. But by the time you are a governor of the state, you are a big man. So the position of Potiphar can be equated to that of a governor in our present in time. So you can imagine. The government of an entire state, you know, his salaries, his allowances, and every other thing he knew nothing about. You receive all the alerts, you control all the money, and yet you must still faith. So, did somebody trust you that much as a Christian? Did somebody trust me that much as a child of God? You know, those days when we were coming up. You know, my father used to tell me that, you know, because of how faithful people were, if you are traveling out, you can comfortably tell your neighbor, hey, I'm going on a trip or you spending one month, you can look after my wife or my children. Well, you don't try that mistake again. <laughs> yeah, before you return, your wife become another person's wife. <laughs> so you don't try that mistake today. But here is Joseph. Joseph was trusted to you know, this extent that Potiphar put everything that he had 
in the hands of Joseph. So, pastors, can you be trusted? Elders, can we be trusted? Husbands, can we be trusted? Wives, can we be trusted? Children, can we be trusted? You know, the worst thing that can ever happen to you in life, the worst thing that can ever happen to you is to live with someone you don't trust. That is the worst thing that can ever happen to you. You live with somebody, you stay with a person you don't trust. This is what is happening in most marriages because even some husbands cannot remove their wallets in the presence of their wives. They have to hide in the toilets before they count money and give their wives. So now you can imagine that kind of punishment. The wife you have married, the wife you brought in your own house, you cannot move your wallet in the bank. You have to hide in the toilet or in the bathroom. So the worst thing that can ever happen to you is to live with someone you don't trust. So can we be trusted as children of God? Even our young people, I know there are youths here that their parents cannot even trust them with their own school fees. The father has to travel all the way from Rongai to Mombasa to go and settle your school fees. As a child, you cannot be trusted with your own fees. Your own school fees. You know, by here we see Joseph in the land of Egypt. You know, Joseph was far from home. But he was never far from God. Far from God, but never far from God. But you know, today we see the opposite with most of our young people. You know, by the time they leave home to their schools, they walk away from their parents, they become different people in time. When they are coming home, they pretend to be good children. But they are in school, they go to parties, they behave, you know, hey, ma. But when they are coming home, they pretend to be good children. But here we see Joseph. Even though he was far from home, but Joseph was never far from God. So, dear friends, You know, as Joseph stayed in the house of Potiphar, he was carrying out his duties faithfully in that house. He was faithful in all his assignments and everything that he does. But I know if you notice the end of verse number six, the Bible says, but Joseph was a very handsome young man. He was well built. That is what the Bible says. But I know he never knew that his master's wife had bad intentions. So she kept disturbing the young man. Please come to bed with me. You know, she kept disturbing Joseph. Can you please come to bed with me? And Joseph said, No, I cannot do such. I cannot do such a thing. But you see, there was this fateful day that Joseph was trapped in the house. Just Joseph and this woman. And she said, Young man, today is today, you have to come to bed with you. And Joseph said, No way, I can't go to bed with you. You know, even when she persisted, I so much love the response that Joseph gave. And I want us to look at that response in Genesis 39, I think it was number 9, or 10 if I'm not mistaken. Genesis 39, yes, was number 9. Genesis 39, was number 9. This is what the Bible says. There is no one greater in this house than I. Nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. Now listen to the last sentence. How then, how then 
Can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Are we together? Now, this is the point that I want us to take. Joseph told this woman, Nobody is better than me in this house. And my master has not kept anything from me but you. How then can I do this great wickedness against God? Joseph's concern was God and not for him. How we together? Yes. Maybe let me say this. There are many Christians who are morally steady. They don't fornicate, they keep the Ten Commandments, they don't steal, but they will still born in hellfire. Simply because their morality is not inspired by the fear of God. Their morality is inspired by other things. But here Joseph is telling the woman, my problem is not even total. My problem is not any sexually transmitted disease. But I cannot do this wickedness in the sight of God. You don't fall in it because you fear HIV, you go to hellfire. Yes! You don't fall in it because you are afraid your reputation can be mad, you are an elder in the church, in the society. That is the only reason you don't fall in it. That is the only reason you don't see, you still go to hellfire. But Joseph's morality was not inspired by the fear of consequences. Joseph's morality was inspired by the fear of God. If there were no consequences, will you still be moral as a Christian? Assuming there were no consequences, assuming there were no dangers, will you still be moral as a Christian? So there are a lot of Christians who are morally okay. They are morally stable. They are morally balanced. They come to church. They keep the Ten Commandments. But they will still go to hellfire. Simply because that morality is not inspired by the fear of God. So Joseph's concern was actually God, not even God. Joseph's concern was actually God, not because he feared consequences. So Joseph told his master's wife, how can I do this wickedness and sin against God? And by the way, maybe we need to ask. I don't know if we still regard this sexual sin as something that is wicked, wickedness against God. In fact, it is becoming a new normal even in the church today. It is becoming a new normal. Nobody regards that as sin anymore. People are becoming comfortable with that. That is why I want people to tell me I'm comfortable with my father who is an elder. I am going to see my boyfriend. I'm coming back after three days. The only thing that the father will tell you is to take care of yourself. And that is all. He even gives a transport man. And yet she is going to see a boyfriend that they are not legally married. And she said, I'm staying three days or four days there. And the only thing you tell her as a father is, Take care of your son. So I don't know if we still regard, if we still see this particular sin as wickedness against God. But Joseph told his master's wife, even though nobody is here, yes, I know nobody can see us, but I saw not believe. The God who lives in heaven, he sees every secret. And this is wickedness against God. A little bit, you know, when you read that story critically, it actually took a struggle before Joseph ran away from that woman. So that is to tell you that you know not sin. You know, you struggle with sin. Many times we massage sin, we rob sin, 
And that is why we fall into temptation many times. It took a fight, it took a struggle before Joseph could free himself from that particular woman. You know what I'm saying? In the course of the struggle, he even left his garment with her. But at least he managed and escaped. Even if he went naked, but he still escaped. So it was a struggle. But you know, today we play a lot with sin. We massage sin. We do the things that we want. We don't even care. But Joseph, you know, had to stop. And the Lord, he was set him free. Now, my dear friends, you know, when Putifar returned, this woman actually fabricated all her lies. And she told Potiphar that without thorough investigation, Joseph was sent to the prison cell. Now there is something I want us to actually see here. Because we are going to the prison cell to see if anything has actually changed regarding Joseph's war with the Lord. You know, there are Christians that can be very funny. When things are moving smoothly, they are good Christians. But by the time circumstances change, they also change with circumstances. For now, here is Joseph, who was the head in his master's house, wrongly accused for doing the right thing. And now he finds himself in the prison cell. So now we are going we are going to the prison cell to see if anything has happened regarding Joseph's relationship with God. Now we have many Christians today that are angry with God. Angry Christians. They are angry with God. But I mean, before we go to the prison cell, I feel there is a lesson we can also take here. Now, Joseph was sent to the prison cell not because he did anything bad, but just for doing the right thing. You know, the mistakes we have today, even among Christians, is, you know, when you are doing the right thing, you will expect people to be clapping for you, people to be giving you nice comments and commendations, and it is not always the case. There are times you can be better for you doing the right thing. Yes, there are times doing the right thing can even send you to prison. And here we find Joseph, not because he committed any offense, not because he committed any crime, but simply because Joseph chose to do the right thing and he was sent to the prison cell. So sometimes when we do the right thing, and then we start receiving attacks, and but sometimes we even leave the church. He said, no, I'm living the church. In fact, the good that I'm doing is not even really appreciated. Nobody appreciates. And so you live the church, I'm living the church for them. What's the friend? If you are in the church and then you expect every good that you do, people to go away, then you are making a mistake. So Joseph was sent to prison, not because he committed any offense, but because he did the right thing. Now let's look at what happened. Genesis 7, 39, verse 21, 2, 3, 2, 3. 7, 39, verse 21, through 3. The Bible says that. But the Lord was with Joseph. Are we together? Now if you read verse 3, the Bible says, And his master saw that the Lord was with him. When he was in his master's house, and now in verse 21, even in the prison cell, the Bible tells us that, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and led him further in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And verse 22 says, and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison and whatsoever they did there. He was the doer of the prison. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did 
the Lord made it to prosper. Now listen to this. In the house of Potiphar, the Bible tells us, in verse number 5 and 6, that his master entrusted everything that he had in the hands of Joseph. And now in the prison cell, we are told that the prison keeper also entrusted all the prisoners in the hands of who? Let me ask us. Prisons are run by who? In Nigeria, we know prisons are run by waters. But there is another prison run by another prison. They must remember, so what is Joseph's name in this context? He is in prison. And whoever is in prison is a prisoner. And the Bible tells us, even the keeper of the prison entrusted all other prisoners in the hands of Joseph. Whatever that was done there, he has no business. Joseph was in charge. A prisoner running a prison. Friends, it still boils down to the question of trust. You Knowing the house of Potiphar, Joseph was trusted that much. And now, even in the prison cell, the Bible tells us that, you know, the keeper of the prison trusted Joseph. And with Joseph in charge, he had nothing to bother. He placed all other prisoners in the hands of Joseph. And with Joseph there, he had nothing to bother. But you see, something happened in that prison cell. You know, there were two prisoners in the cell when you read Genesis chapter 40, this time around, verse 1 to 3. In the prison cell, Joseph met two guys. You know, the first guy was the king's cup bearer. Then the other guy was the king's beggar. So they were in prison with Joseph. So the two guys had dreams. And in the morning they were so much worried, they were bothered, and Joseph could see from their countenances, could see from their faces that yes, these guys were in trouble. And Joseph walked them. He said, What could be the problem? They said, We both had dreams. We don't even know who to give us the interpretation of those dreams. And Joseph offered himself. He said, I can give the interpretations. Joseph gave the interpretations. You know, one of them had a favorable dream, while the other had a terrible one. To one, Joseph said, in three days, you will be restored to your former position. While the other person, Joseph told him, in three days, you will be converted. And everything came to pass as Joseph told them. But you see, to the guy that had the favorable dream, Joseph made a request. When you read Genesis chapter 40, verse number 14, this is actually the request that Joseph made to the guy who had the favorable dream. He said, But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. You know, that was Joseph's. Uh, request to the king's court here who had the favorable dream. He said, What well, it shall be well with me? Please remember me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh that I can be brought out of this house. But when you read verse 23, this is what the Bible says on Genesis 40, verse 23, the Bible says, Yet did not the chief butler. Remember Joseph, but they forgot him. You know, this is a guy that had a dream and was confused, and nobody could give the interpretation. But Joseph gave the interpretation, and everything came to pass as Joseph told him. But that he made one request please kindly remember him. But we are told that when things, you know, were. As Joseph informed him, he forgot about Joseph. 
You know, it's just like our African politicians. When they are looking for power, they come and make a lot of promises. You know, the moment they get there, they forget about everybody. That was what happened to Joseph. But let me tell you, dear friends, you see, Joseph was only forgotten by man, but he will be remembered by God. Even if you are forgotten by man, my dear brother, keep doing the good thing. God will remember you one day. So, because Joseph was never forgotten by God, even in the palace where this man went, God actually brought an occasion that caused this man to remember Joseph. You know, when he was restored, Potiphar had a, you know, favored himself, not Potiphar this time around. Favored himself, had a dream, and they were looking for the interpreter. Because nobody in the land could give the interpretation. And that was when it dawned on this man. There was this boy I met in the prison cell who actually interpreted my dream. And everything came to pass as he said, Why don't we invite him? But you know, verse number 14, the Bible tells us in verse number 23 that he forgot about Joseph. But God actually brought an occasion. And that occasion forced him to remember Joseph. And you know, Joseph was called. When Joseph came, he gave the interpretation of the king's dream. And when he gave the interpretation, the Bible tells us that when Joseph was brought before Pharaoh, he interpreted his dreams and was consequently made prime minister to help Egypt, wisely managed the years of famine. Because the dream that the king had, according to the interpretation that Joseph gave, there will be seven years of famine and seven years of abundance. And then they asked Joseph, what do we need to do? He said, the only thing we need to do in the seven years of abundance is let us store up enough food against the seven years of famine. And so Joseph was made the prime minister. And now as I conclude the sermon, there are some interesting verses in Genesis 41 that I want us to actually read. Now let's begin with Genesis 41, verse number 40. Genesis 41, verse number 40. If anyone is there, can help us read that passage. Genesis 41, 40, what does the Bible say? Yes. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto the word shall all my people be ruling. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. You don't need to see. Maybe John to 44. What does verse 44 say? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without me shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. John to 55, and we again to 55. Same chapter. 55 says, And when all the land of Egypt was famine, and the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, and Pharaoh said unto all Egyptians, Go unto Joseph. What he says is true. Now, based on these verses, who was actually ruling the country? Was it Pharaoh or Joseph? But who was the king? But who was ruling the country? Because the Bible says in verse 55, when the whole land was punished, the people ran to Pharaoh because they knew Pharaoh to be their king. They knew Pharaoh as their king, and they said, Oh, king, the land is in trouble. What do we do? The king said, Honestly, I don't have any idea. Kindly go to Joseph. Whatever he tells you, don't argue. Don't even ask questions. Just do. In fact, when you read verse 44, he even tells Joseph, Nobody in this country can even leave his leg or his hand without your permission. So my dear friends, it is nice to walk with the Lord. 
You know, sometimes you may not actually understand. Even some certain situations in our journey, in our walk. But let's keep trusting God. You know, it was not actually easy for Joseph to, you know, try to put all these things together. Given the beautiful dreams he had in his father's house, and then how events, you know, began to unfold, this dreamer is now sold as a slave boy. And even in his master's house where he is made head, and now things are also moving from bad to worse. Now he ended up in this. But Joseph never knew in all these things. God was actually working out something better. That is what the Bible says. Joseph was consequently made Prime Minister of Egypt. And the Father, according to the verses that we read, let me ask you know, Joseph's new position now. Do you know that? Even Potiphar and his wife are now under Joseph. Are we together? Yes, because Pharaoh said nobody in this land was fortified exempted. He said nobody in the land can lift his foot or hand in this land without your permission. He said it is only on, when it comes to the matters of the throne that I will be greater than you, but nobody is greater than Joseph. Now even Potiphar and the wife that wrongly accused Joseph were now under the law. Even the king's cup here, who forgot about Joseph, is now under the Is now under Joseph. My dear friends, it is nice to work with the Lord. We can see a young man who was so consistent in his work with God. We can see a young man who was faithful in the line of duty. In the house of Potiphar, he proved himself to be a trustworthy servant. In the prison cell, when he was made head, he proved himself to be a trustworthy servant. And even when he became the prime minister, Joseph proved himself to be a trustworthy servant. Faithfulness in the line of Jesus. And I want to conclude with these two verses. Maybe I will offer some hope and comfort to somebody who is here today. Genesis 41, verse 51 and 52. You know, in the land of Egypt, Joseph got married and uh, he even had two sons. When yeah, someone interested in the names, he gave those two sons. When you read Genesis 41, verse 51, the Bible says, and Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. And this is the name of Manasseh. For God, said he, had made me forget all my trouble and all my father's house. Are we together? That was the name of the first son. So that is the name of Manasseh. My dear friend, I want to say to somebody today, I don't even know your predicament or the things you've been going through. But I want to know this. If you sincerely walk with the Lord and trust everything in His hands, God can cause you to forget all your souls. That is actually what Joseph is saying. He has made me forget all my toys. All the troubles in my father's house. But there may even be people here who actually left the village because of some problems. They cannot even save the village. But if you trust in the Lord, just like he made Joseph forget all these troubles, the Lord can also do the same to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And verse 52. And the name of the second called he Ephraim. And now the name of Ephraim. For God had caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. May this be our experience in Jesus' name. Amen, Amen. 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 Amen.